cataractcoach.com, ACI well placement and a pupiloplasty. So a challenging case being performed by a resident surgeon in training. So here's the case. The patient already had a complete pars plana vitrectomy. This patient had an intraocular foreign body, which damaged that inferior iris, damaged the lens, ended up in the retina. So this patient had a lensectomy and a full vitrectomy, and now time for an IOL. And you can see, first step is to go in here with micro forceps and see, is there any iris that's kind of adhered or stuck in the angle of the eye? There's that inferior PI, the patient had that after prior retina surgery. Now we're making an incision here for an anterior chamber maintainer. We don't have an anterior chamber maintainer, so we may do. We used a 23 gauge IV cannula. That's the plastic part of a sterile IV cannula to be used normally for intravenous administration of medicine. So now here comes the 10O proline on the very long needle. There's that long curved needle, getting a bit of the iris here. Now, this is the catch. How much iris do you grab? Here it's helpful to go ahead and use forceps in the other hand or even a needle like this and advance the tissue to you. Now, we'll pass it through here, and I can tell you the first bite on the iris is a little bit too close to the periphery. The second bite coming out now is pretty good, and we use that needle there, that hollow bore needle, to dock it and bring that needle, the 10 proline needle, out through that paracentesis. So there we go. Now we're going to use the Uggerwall fourth throw pupiloplasty technique here. So get the needle off, get rid of that, and you got to bring a loop of the suture using a hook or other device out through that same paracentesis. And once that hook is brought out, we're going to do the 411, called the fourth throw pupiloplasty. Again, that's Uggerwall's technique, it's fantastic. So there's the hook, bring it out, there's our loop, we're gonna use that. And we'll loop the suture through there, the free end that's in the same pair of knees, loop it, loop it through four times, we'll kind of give it some advice there. And one, two, three, four times, and then we'll tighten this up. Now you're gonna notice something, the suture's gonna pop through a cheese wire on that iris there. Look at the top of the screen, that first bite of iris, as the suture is tied up, that's not enough of a bite of the iris tissue. So as it being pulled, there it goes, it just snapped. So now what? Now you gotta start over. All right, so you got that old suture out. Let's start over again. This time using forceps, so 23 gauge micro forceps in the left hand, the suture going in the right, that's the 10 proline on the long needle to get a nice chunkier, bigger bite of the iris tissue. And then there we go, we can now dock it through the hollow bore 27 gauge needle and pull this outside the eye. And now again, I'll show you the three one or four one one pupiloplasty. So again, Agarwal's four throw pupiloplasty. Whoops, you just lost your AC maintainer. Put that back in the eye. Next time, we may want to put that AC maintainer a little bit farther away from the area where we're operating. So instead of putting it here inferiorly where the iris defect is, maybe next time we could put it some other position. But again, bringing this out now, you'll notice as we bring this out and do our four throws, it be, it's going to close that iris uh, defect very nicely. Keeping in mind, what's your ideal pupil size for this patient? Now, this is not going to dilate much. As a result, you don't want to make too small of a pupil that's going to preclude you from having a view of the retina. Remember that. This patient had retina trauma, intraocular foreign body in the, stuck in the retina and had that removed and repaired. So we want to be able to examine the retina. So I think the minimum you're looking at is about a four millimeter pupil. I would not aim for a three millimeter or smaller pupil. Three and a half may be acceptable, but kind of four is your sweet spot. So after the, after the suture is passed here four times, one, two, three, four throws through that loop, now the two ends can be pulled apart and the knot will automatically be brought inside the eye and it can be closed. Look at that defect, great. So this is the patient without dilation. Remember the patient's inferior iris is the one that is not working. The rest of the iris does tend to work. So this pupil size is just about perfect. Again, this patient ended up dilating in the post op period to about four to four and a half millimeters, which is very sufficient for a good retinal view. So we'll bring that other end out now and do two more knots, and then it will just cut it, and we'll leave the ends a little on the longer side. There's no need to make them very short-ended. So look at that defect being closed nicely. It's gonna take one more suture right where the tip of that AC maintainer is, and once that extra suture goes in, the iris will be closed quite nicely. Now for the lens option, what are your choices here? Yes, you could do a Yamane, you can do a Gore-Tex, su su uh, suturing the lens to the sclera, you can do a lot of different things. 
In this case, however, what we're going to do is we're just going to place an AC lens. And I'm going to show you that. Now, we've talked about AC lenses. Let's talk a little bit about the lens power selection. So the way you choose the AC lens, we talked about this in Cataract Coach already, so you should know this. It relates to the A constant of the lens. So if our in-the-bag calculation, let's say, is a 20-diopter lens for Plano, and we put in an AC lens, we need to look at the difference of the A constant of the um, Cap, the lens that's in the capture bag versus the AC lens. So in this case, our calculation was an A constant of 119.2, and now it's calling for a 20 diopter lens. And now the AC IOL has an A constant of 115.7. So 119.2 minus 115.7 is a difference of 3.5. So now the IOL power for the AC lens must be three and a half diopters less. So if it was 20 for the lens, the, the poster chamber lens that goes in the bag, then it's gonna be 16.5 for the AC lens here. We also need to, mo to, to make the AC lens the appropriate size. There I am measuring white to white. You saw the measuring caliper going on there. As the resident suturing, I'm just helping to measure. And we choose the AC lens based on it. Because remember, AC lenses come in different sizes. AC lenses are angle-supported lenses. And so you wanna measure that horizontal white to white and add about a half diopter, maybe at the most one diopter to that number. And that's the overall width of the AC lens that you're going to choose. And so in this case, we get that lens being opened up. There's the AC maintainer still. And that pupillal plastic looks pretty darn good. I think we'll take that. Here's that last suture being pulled through. Now see how there's a little cheese wiring there of the iris tissue. This is again to be expected. Iris tissue is wimpy, especially in this case where it had it suffered bad trauma. There could be poor blood flow and it could be a little bit avascular, and as a result, it may be more friable and damageable and, and uh, delicate than you're expecting. So a little bit of that defect is okay. Here, the patient had an original incision to remove this large intraocular foreign body, so we're opening up that original incision. We don't want to create a new one. And now we can just widen up that incision to about six and a half millimeters. The AC lens has an optic size, an overall width, of five and a half millimeters over a length, and I think it was 13 in this case. And so we want to have that incision about six and a half, so about a millimeter more than the width of this lens, and that'll count for the thickness of the lens plus the thickness of our forceps. Let me show you that. Now, this patient's also on the young side. You can see, look at those eyelashes, not a single gray hair, young person. And for him, he has a very strong endothelial cell count. I think it was 3,000 cells per square millimeter, so this is gonna be just fine with this AC lens. So here comes the AC lens. Now, is the orientation correct or is it upside down? Ooh, you better know that one. That's also on Cataract Coach. And so here's how you figure that out. Look at the haptic optic junction, and that should be the same as any other lens or an anti-S, right where the haptic touches the optic. So we're getting the lens in the eye. This is where, why is the AC maintainer not on? You want to turn that on, deepen up the eye a little bit. It makes life so much easier. So don't do this under a flat eye. And again, this is an eye that has a unicameral eye. So let's get the AC maintainer on. I think that'll whoop, nicely deepen things up. And we already have a sufficient PI. There was an inferior PI made at the time of the retina surgery. And there's some gaps in that iris tissue from suturing. So we don't need to make another PI. There's plenty of flow there to avoid pupillary block. So now that looks pretty good. We need to rotate this lens. I want to get this lens rotated. So the lens is at the patient's horizontal, three o'clock, nine o'clock. So again, we're sitting temporally here, or the video is filmed temporally. So in your video, I want that lens to be straight up and down. There you go. And look at that, getting at center. Look how it centers up over that pupil. Again, that's a 5.5 millimeter optic, so you can tell that pupil in one meridian is about four and a half, maybe almost five, and the other meridian maybe three and a half to four, which is pretty good. And again, this patient will, uh, dial it a little bit more for the rest of the iris. The inferior part does not, but the rest will. Now, suturing up that main incision, don't leave that thing open. You want to have this eye nice and watertight. And so we'll cut that off, and the resident will suture this up. And this is going to be a pretty good outcome. This patient was incredibly 2040 on post op day one, and was very, very happy. And I anticipate the patient will have a reasonable outcome here. Now, what do you aim for a refractive target? This patient's 30, let's say 35, 40 years old, and the other eye is totally phagic and healthy and normal as emotropic. Well, a couple of choices. You can either aim for Plano. Oh, so much for that 10 on nylon. Oh, that didn't work. 
I thought I'd rather try that again. So you can also aim for plain nose, one thing, or aim for just a little myopia. Minus a half, minus one is probably a good option there. So we'll let the resident redo this suture. We'll fast forward it because we don't want to watch this anymore. We're done watching suturing. And let's try this to the end of the case here. Boom, post-op day one. Pretty nice result. I'll take it. So good job for my resident on a tough case. And hey, don't forget to practice more suturing, right? Thanks for watching, guys.